Hi, I'm Emily Tackett, and this is Real Talk. Today, I'm with Todd Rudat, sometimes affectionately known as Hudat Rudat, with Student Accessibility and Support Services. Todd, to start us off, can you just introduce yourself? Tell us what you do at the college. I, uh, uh, I am Todd Rudat, Coordinator of Disability Services within the Office of Student Accessibility and Support. So my main purpose is to coordinate disability services for students at OCCC. And what does disability services do specifically? How do you all help students? So if a student has a disability that impairs their access to course content, the course itself, the campus itself, um, disability services exists to try to create access where access is, you know, has a barrier. And we do that through stuff that's known as accommodation. So if a student has a visual impairment, for example, um, they might need a bigger font size on their tests. You know, so what we'll do is make sure they're getting their, their tests printed in the larger font. Um, we can do other things like if they are not you know, completely visually impaired, um, they might not be able to access a graphing calculator, something that's required in most of our upper level math classes. It's very visual. Well, we have technology, the assistive technology, that can turn a graphing calculator into a talking graphing calculator. So now a visual graph is electronically converted and into uh, audio graph so they can participate with their classmates on tests and, and in those courses. So sometimes it's technology, sometimes the accommodation can be as simple as I need to sit in the front of the room so I can see the board better. So we'll make sure that they get preferential seating to sit in the front of the room. So who all do you provide services to? Do you all do temporary services? Yeah. Um, you know, most of our services are for students with some sort of diagnosed, uh, what would we call a permanent dis disability or disabling condition. That is typically something like a learning disability. They might have a dyslexia or a reading comprehension issue. It can be an attention deficit like ADD or ADHD type diagnoses. It can be anxiety or depression or some sort of even, you know, a stronger mental health issue. It can be a medical issue like severe arthritis or, uh, you know, some sort of chronic medical condition. It can be a seizure disorder. It can be a brain injury, a neurological condition. It can be um, hearing issues or vision issues, anything that is going to impair their access. Mm -hmm. Now, some students don't have those to, to start, but at some point during uh, their time as an OCCC student, they might break their arm or injure their wrist or you know, damage their eye, you know, vision for some reason or something. That's a temporary issue, but it's going to impact them in the course that they're currently in. They might not be able to write while their hand's in a cast and they still have to take the little Scantron test and fill in the bubbles like everyone else. So those students would be eligible for what we would call temporary accommodation. So just during the time that they're in the cast, we could temporarily accommodate them with a test scribe as an example. Great. And most students get referred, if they come to us from high school, they get referred into our services. But if they're a working adult that's starting later and got a disconnect between high school and college and now, they may not know about the services. So are the services free? Are they confidential? Yeah. So yeah, most, you know, most of our students are either referred right out of high school um, or their teachers, you know, they, they ask their instructor, hey, and then the instructor refers them to our office. But anybody can come. Um, you don't have to have a formal diagnosis to come and see us. Mm -hmm. um, but you will need a formal diagnosis to be accommodated. The services are completely free and completely confidential. We don't charge for those things. Um, if a student needs something like that calculator that I showed you, um, it's a very expensive calculator. We have those in, in inventory and would loan those to the students. Now they wouldn't give them away, but they loan them to the students. Um, and it's completely confidential. The instructor only knows what the accommodation need of the student is. We do not share the diagnostics of the student. So the only people that will know that the condition exists or what the condition is are the staff in the Student Accessibility and Support Office. If a student wants to come to you and get these services, what's the first step for them? The, the first step is basically just connecting with our office and making that appointment. Um, so if they're on campus, it's just dropping by Student Accessibility and Support, the SAS office. 
um, down in student services in the main building, first floor. Um, but if they're off campus and don't want to come to campus, um, you know, we are one of the links on the web page. So you go to student accessibility support, you can connect with us there, our phone number's there. If they just want to fire off an email, I have one of the easiest emails on campus to remember because I'm Trudat. Yes! So Trudat <laughs> at OCCC.edu is a great way. So if you're just not sure how do I get going, fire an email to Trudat and I will make sure that you get connected with you know, what you need to do to get started in the process. Amazing. Um, and then how can a staff member or faculty member refer a student to you all? Yeah, uh, uh, faculty and staff um, can refer to us. Again, if they're on campus, they can walk the student to our office if they, if they want to, um, but they can refer the student down to us physically or do the same thing. Go, you know, let them know, here's who you need to talk to, give them my email address. Um, if the faculty and staff are just not sure and have questions, Again, the same TrueDat email that works for students works for them. They can contact me and say, hey, I have a student. What, do, what, what would you like me to do? Many of our instructors will do it that way through email. They'll send an email courtesying the student within the emails to connect us um, that way. And then we, we take the ball from there and run with it. So, Todd, thank you so much for coming and teaching us about this and for all the work that you do for our students. Thank you. Is that good?